Hello, in this tutorial, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of creating this minima form using Kangaroo and Grasshopper. To start off, we need a base form, a base BREP form that we'll use to convert into a mesh and then apply some Kangaroo codes to create this geometry. For the sake of this exercise, I already have a base geometry created. We'll convert this geometry into a mesh and then apply some Kangaroo codes to convert into a minima structure or form. One thing to note while creating this geometry is that it needs to have certain naked edges. If you're familiar with my previous videos on mesh modeling, you would be familiar with naked edges and clothed edges. And you need to have some interesting interplay of gaps in the structure, and that's completely up to you. You also need to ensure that these surfaces are joined properly and there are no gaps, as you can see over here, no gaps. Right. So let's get started. I have this geometry internalized in Grasshopper, so I'm going to hide this from this canvas. The first thing we need to ensure is that these are individual surfaces. We convert this into a mesh, join them, and convert this entire structure geometry into a single mesh. I'm going to start by converting this into a simple mesh, such that I get quartz as an output. The next thing is to join these meshes. We can use ViewerBird's join meshes component, and we will set the weld input to true. Once this is done, we already have our weld singular mesh, but just to be certain, we are going to use additional mesh operations to weld vertices and unify the mesh as well. This is to ensure that if two faces are in opposite direction, they get aligned and we get a proper base mesh. Right. So to do that, I'm going to go to mesh, utilities, and bring in weld vertices. And again, go to mesh utilities and bring in mesh unify normals. So this goes in over here and this goes in over here. And now we can be certain that our mesh is a clean mesh. One way to identify this is when I hover over here, you see that you've got 215 vertices and 129 faces, whereas the output over here has 132 vertices. So there's a significant reduction in the number of vertices and that happened because there was some orientation issue which is now addressed. Once you have a final mesh, we want to subdivide this mesh further. I'm going to hide the previous geometries. To convert this into a subdivided mesh, we use ViewerBird's constant quad split subdivision. We use the mesh, we set the level to Three. and let's keep the corners fixed. I'm going to set this to zero. Now we have a subdivided mesh. Once we have this mesh, this is our base mesh, right? So this is the base mesh. We also need a target for this base mesh, for this operation. To get the target, what we'll do is take the singular mesh over here and get a bounding box for this. Use the bounding box operation. And as you can notice over here, we get individual bounding boxes. So rather than using individual meshes, we need to combine mesh and we get a complete bounding box. We need to use a volume to get the center point of this box, which is... Let me use the point. Right, it's somewhere over here. That's the center, right? Now we need to create... A... Let me illustrate what you're going to do. You're going to create a geometry that's going to be a target geometry. And that target geometry is going to act as an attractor for this mesh. So all of these mesh edges will try and go attach itself to that bounding geometry. We create an egg shape geometry for that and use a point, create a circle out of it. Not a circle, but a sphere. Let me start with a random dimension. Let's see. Okay, 50 seems fine. And then scale this in a non-uniform manner using scale and you. So here's a geometry. We don't want to scale this in the X and Y direction, but we want to scale this in the Z direction. So I'm going to copy this and change this value to something like a 1.5. Right, so we get this X shape. Now when we're scaling, we need a center point for scaling as well. So I'm going to use the center point of the sphere for scaling. Now this geometry is the and this is our target geometry. So we have the base and the target. Hide everything else before this. Copy it forward. So the first thing we need to do is set all the kangaroo goals. Let's bring in the goals that we need. We need the show to visualize the mesh. We need edge length. We need pressure. What else? We need, we need line length. We need the angle goal. 
and we'll go this one over here right we need sphere collide are we missing anything and we need the on mesh goal right so these are seven goals that we need let me explain why do we need each of them we need show because after the kangaroo solver is complete we need to visualize the output and that's why show is required edge length converts these meshes and let me just write this for a second converts all of these edges into springs and that's how you get the smooth curvatures in the form pressure is a way to retain the gap these gaps between the form and avoid self intersection of these faces length tries to keep these edges at a constant size and uh, avoids collapsing of these edges onto itself angle tries to ensure that the resulting geometry or the resulting naked edges are in a circular form or close to circular form rather than forming some sharp angles sphere collide is the main component that will help map this geometry onto the mesh and the mesh or the on mesh goal will help project these edges or these points onto our target mesh which is over here this is not a mesh at the moment it's a bead but we'll convert that or we'll use that as a mesh right so let's get started with the goals first thing is to just try like like this let's set up the simple goals so that's the mesh that goes in over here that's the show we also need an entwine to combine all of these goals let's add them together over here so we have the show goal then we have the edge length it requires a mesh it needs a length factor which i always like to keep 2.1 if you want to understand how edge lengths work or how you really work with uh, the elasticity of a mesh i recommend some videos in the description do check it out now for strength i'm going to set an arbitrary value for now at 11 and we manipulate this data for pressure we need to mesh again and for the strength value we need a range or a numeric slider now if you want to understand why the numeric slider for pressure is something really small as you can see over here i recommend you check out the video in the description now these are the standard goals for mesh now we move on to the on mesh and the sphere collide function let's just move that over here let's bring this over here for the on mesh function we need to identify the points that needs to project to the target geometry so this is the mesh which is our target so this goes over here the points are these naked vertices so to identify naked vertices you can select viewer birds or we can do it without viewer bird as well you need to go to kangaroo mesh find the naked vertices use the naked points and for strength i'm just going to use an arbitrary numeric slider again for sphere collide it's again the same points that are going to be used to input over here now before i use this as an input let me explain what sphere collide does sphere collide will create these imaginary spheres so for example each of these points will have a sphere and these sphere then collide with each other and try to make space so that these can be accommodated and while making space this length or this line will either increase in size or decrease in size it's acting like a plastic between these two spheres and the variation in this length is governed by the size of these spheres so that's exactly what's happening over here you have these points you have a radius that we specify and we have our strength associated with this once this is done then we have most of the goals that we need except these two so for this we need the edges and the edges that we're trying to maintain in terms of length are these so for this first thing that we do is take the mesh extract the naked edges using mesh edges we join these naked edges we end up with certain polyline curves explode use shift list use a craft over here and then a strength over here now let me explain why i did all of this the angle function actually sorry all of this works with the angle not the length line 
So this goes over here, this goes over here. That's the strength, and this is the rest angle. So I'm going to set this to zero. Now, let me just remove this. This. Let me explain what's happening over here. The length or the angle goal tries to maintain a certain angle between two lines. Now, this won't work if you choose this as your first line, this as your second line. That's why it requires a line A and a line B. So the first thing we did was extract all the naked edges and join them. When we join them, we get these polyline curves. When we explode them, we get these individual segments, but in the right order. So this is one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, in a particular polyline, which is over here, when you explode it, you get certain segments which are 32 over here. And these are ordered. When you shift the list, you shift the order by one. So if the initial order was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the shifted order would be like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Once you have done this, you've got two lists. One list which is ordered in this way, and the other list is ordered in this way. Now, when you use these two lists as input, what you're doing is mapping 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 2 to 2, because this was 0, 1, 2 in one list, and this was 0, 1, 2 in the other list. And that helps us get the two lines required for the angle goal. When you're setting the rest angle to 0, that means the desired angle between them should be 0. That's what we're doing. Next is the length line. So here we need the segments. Here are the segments that we need to maintain. For the length, I'm just going to find the length of these segments, the current length of these segments. And we would like to maintain this as length for now. That's the strength. <coughs> right, so once we have all of these goals together, the next thing we would need is this solver. So we bring in our Kangaroo solver. Here are the goals and Straight away, we realized that something just went wrong. So I'm just going to disable everything or just disable the preview for everything. I'm going to use a Boolean toggle to disable the preview or disable the solver. And I'm going to use an explode tree at this point to extract the mesh for visualization. Now, the mesh was used as the first input in Entwine. So it's going to come out as the first output in the explode tree. So I can just put a mesh in front of this. That's our output. And to visualize this better, I'm going to use deconstruct mesh. I get these normals, which I'm going to use as color information. These mesh colors, here's the mesh, here are the colors. Hide everything. Right, so we are almost there, but we're not getting the result that we need. So now let's play with these sliders and see how to get our desired output. Right, and there you have it. That's the form. If you like to smoothen it further, you may simply go to Viewer Bird, use the Capital Clark subdivision, use this as an input, use that as an output. And there you have it. Right. So all these settings that I've done right now are just based on what I saw on screen on the canvas and then made some adjustments to get the form that I need. So it's an, it's an iterative process where you need to keep playing with these strength values and the actual length values and you'll derive the form that you see on the canvas. All of these values are already set in the Grasshopper file that is attached with this tutorial. And with a different starting geometry, you can get different forms using this workflow. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more exciting computational design content. For those of you who want to dive deeper and access complete tutorial along with the Grasshopper file, consider supporting me on Patreon, link is in the description below. The support helps me create more detailed and valuable content for our design community. See you in the next video.